Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today we're doing a review of the Atomstack A20 Pro 20 watt diode laser. In fact, I have it right here, up here on the big CO2 behind me. And uh, one of the things that uh, I guess a lot of people have been waiting for is a uh, great laser for a raffle. Well, guess what, folks? This laser is going to be the December raffle laser. You're not going to want to miss this one. So let's get started with the review. All right, so here is the finished product. I have been using this for about two weeks now. So uh, this is not right after the assembly. This is after a little bit of modification and uh, a few problems. But if we look up, let me uh, raise this up just a little bit so you can see it better. I had to actually take a piece of common electrical wire, a ground wire, and put it on here because it's nice and stiff. This is, see how it moves with the, with the module? So I put that on there because these wires curl up and go underneath down in here without this holding them up. They definitely didn't put too much thought into the wire management on this. And probably the worst thing of all on, on the wire management is going to be on the, the side here. This particular wire here. This wire has got a mind of its own. Uh, it, the wires are so stiff inside of here. They came folded up for transport. You'll, you'll see fold, fold, fold. They were all folded up. And I couldn't get the fold out no matter what I did. They still have the folds in them. You can try as hard as you want to unfold them. They just don't. They go back to their original position. Uh, they get caught up everywhere. You need plenty of extra space on the right side to keep them from getting caught. I really wish they would have used drag chains on the on the X and the Y, but they didn't. So um, the in the front, you've got your controller, your offline controller, which I didn't use during the testing. I just unplugged it and put it away. And the reason that I did that is because the controller blocks the air vents on the front here. So I'm not going to be using an SD card. If you work offline, you know, you can go ahead and use this controller, but just put it up here or out of the way. Don't, don't put it on the front because you got air vents there. That doesn't even make sense to me. There's the, the final build. Uh, I, there's nothing much I can say. It's a laser. Uh, I like the 2040 extrusion. Uh, but other than that, I would have rather seen the, the C channel like, like most people are moving to today. Um, but other than that, really no complaints. The zero is off up here. This is not zero. If I uh, home the laser <laughs> and I go by these numbers up here, well, um, that would be zero, zero. Right about there. So uh, let's see what that is from... The real zero zero. Well, let's see. The laser's back here, about a hundred <laughs> millimeters off. So the real zero zero is way up here. So um, yeah, that's definitely not right. These these numbers are. This is not zero either. It's just barely off by about five millimeters. It's close, but it's not zero zero. These numbers are a complete waste. Probably from a, a different laser that didn't have as big a module as this one does. I don't know. This over here is the best air assist that I've ever uh, used. It has from 0 to 60 uh, milliliters a minute of output. When most, uh, the X tool, the Comgro, are 0 to 30. The Atom Stack, the small barrel style, is like 0 to 15 or 0 to 20. This one is 0 to 60. Has some really great cutting ability and uh, 60 is about as high as you want to go when it comes to the pressure for the air assist and that's about it it's, you got your emergency stop button you know your power network cable same as everything else <laughs> okay so let's move on to the actual use of the machine let's see how well it did in the testing all right so let's start off with the pictures i'm not going to do the 
unboxing and the assembly. I'll put a link down below to the assembly videos. I never do the assembly videos, but what you're going to get is a well-packaged machine, as all of them come these days. You get all of the instruction manuals. The instructions were very clear. This is everything that was in the box. And it was very simple to put together. I think maybe I spent maybe 35 minutes total. Uh, and that was about it. it. This did come with a roller accessory and some extension legs. I am not going to be doing the roller in this video for uh, lack of time. But let's just jump straight into uh, the performance of this machine and the testing. And the very first test that I did was the raster engraving. And you can see here that I went from 10 to 60 power and from 3,000 millimeters per minute to 12,000 millimeters per minute. And I got some really good engravings. So this is how you would set your libraries in Lightburn. So if you wanted a nice light uh, engraving, you would look like maybe right about here, 25% power, 8265 on the speed. Uh, keeping in mind this has a 12,000 limit, 12,000 millimeters per minute. So I would probably pick this box right here is a nice light engraving. And maybe for a medium engraving, uh, I might jump up to uh, something like up here, 12,030. And for a dark engraving, uh, I guess I would probably be somewhere up here in this 55 and 12,000. And you can see that I've gone through the first layer of ply on a lot of these over here. So I wouldn't use those um, for the dark engraving. I would probably say that I'd be somewhere up in here, either this one uh, or this one. Um, these are completely through the ply in the 50 and 60 from here down. So, um, you know, totally unusable. But, uh, and this is the problem that you're going to have with all 20 watt lasers. They're all going to produce this type of uh, raster engraving. So, uh, did, did a fine job on this as far as I can tell. Moving on, uh, we're going to start with the cutting on this. And here we went from 50 to 100% power and from 80 speed to 300 speed. And this was on 6 millimeter uh, 3 ply plywood. So you'll see that I didn't quite get the gradient. You, you know, you'd rather have a gradient somewhere up here in the middle, uh, all the way up to the top corner here. So I had to run this test again because 300 speed wasn't fast enough for the 6 millimeter ply. So I ran the test again and bumped the speed up to 500 uh, on this 6 millimeter. And you can see here that um, this was probably a more appropriate test. This was the built-in light burn uh, test. So at 200 millimeters per second, uh, per mi minute, excuse me, and 70% power for those who want to be conservative on using the power, uh, you'd be doing fine. Uh, that would be a fine setting for your library for six millimeter plywood. If you wanted to jump to 75 power, you can get up to 255. Uh, if you wanted to jump to 90 power, you could get up to 300. And up here, 330, probably the uh, light burn test went from 330 to 364 so you could probably hit 350 right here uh, and that would be the optimal at 100 percent power you'd more than likely get 350 and 100 percent power for six millimeter ply and that's a pretty good a pretty good number uh, very compatible to the last 20 watt that i did and this is 2.5 millimeter uh, plywood and you can see here that I jumped way up to 800 speed and probably could have gone up to about a thousand if I reran this test again at 100% power based on what you see here 700, 750, uh, 800, probably a thousand millimeters per minute at 100% at power, which is a really good number. And just so that you can see the backside, 
Backside doesn't show as much as I would have expected. I would have expected this gradient to be a little further over, over maybe right over here. But still, um, this one was probably almost, except for that little nub, probably cut all the way through. And this one was probably cut all the way through too, but I didn't want to force these out. So moving on, next stop is the eccentric nut test. And it did a really, really fine job on this. Now the line spacing, uh, I'm going to say is not what they claim. Um, so, and this is going to be proof of that. I'll show you in just a minute. But you'll see I have my line spacing test down here. Uh, this is my, my uh, changing direction test up here for uh, 45s. It did well there. It did well everywhere here. If I zoom in a little bit, the uh, center is exact right there. Squares are squares. Circles are circles. Uh, this came out perfect. All of this came out perfect. Text, not so much. Um, but all of the lines did come out very well. Here's a close-up of my 45 test and uh, this is done at a, at a pretty fast speed so uh, did a good job on that. Now here's what I was talking about uh, down in the bottom here I got out my crack ruler. <laughs> yes that is actually a thing I have a crack ruler. <laughs> it's actually used for measuring cracks in concrete and uh, I was looking at the line spacing on here and you can see if I zoom in a bit and move this up, the 0 0.08, uh, you can see there's there's still plenty on this side where it doesn't cover. 0.1 is a tiny little bit uh, that might be overburn, but I'm going to say that it's like 0.1 to 0.11 is going to be your number on this. So, um, yeah, that's... That's what I wound up getting, and I'm using those lines are zero um, when I draw the line. Lightburn draws it at zero millimeters, so it uses, gives you the actual line width of your laser beam. And this one came in at 0 0.10, or maybe slightly above. And here is uh, a bunch of lines at exactly 0.5 millimeter line spacing. So you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, and this is a very close-up picture. You can see a very nice job it did on those lines right there. So moving on, I uh, went to a uh, raster uh, engraving. And this is just a, uh, an image that I have. This is a graphic, 10,000 millimeters per minute, 50% power with the line after fill at 6,040, which did nothing at all. Um, so, but it did do a uh, super nice engraving. If we zoom in on it, you can see that uh, it's really well engraved. This is just an anomaly in the wood up here. Uh, that came out real nice. And then uh, moved on to an actual photograph. At 9,000 millimeters per minute, this sort of shocked me here because uh, I did, set, this is grayscale, 7515 max and min powers. 254 lines per inch and you can see that it went clean through the veneer or the first layer of the plywood um, so but uh, looking at the actual photograph it did a, a, a pretty good job on the photograph itself so uh, if I would have lowered this uh, I, again you know this is how you get your library settings is by running these tests so if I would have lowered this to maybe 7,500 millimeters per minute, I think I would have gotten a perfect photograph. So uh, I did a couple more vector graphics here. Um, you know, different speeds, different powers. Uh, it did a good job. Very, very hot. You know, the machine runs very hot uh, engravings, as you can see. It blasted away that top layer of veneer here and here. Um, but still, uh, and this is down to 40% power here, just blasted away that top layer, but still did a good job. So it's going to take a lot of fine tuning, uh, to get this laser tuned in. So now here's another, this is my eyeball test and you can see that it came out pretty good 
over here at 80% power. So I have the max power set at 100, min at 10 for the grayscale image. And then I ran grayscale, newsprint, dither, and Jarvis. And then I power scaled 80, 70, 60, and 50% at 12,000 millimeters per minute. And you'll see that I got some pretty clear images here, over here at 80%. And especially down here, the Jarvis came out uh, probably the best out of all of them. I decided to change the speed to 8,000 millimeters per minute. And at 8,000 millimeters per minute, I got a really nice uh, clear image on this whole right side here, so 50% power. At 50% power, I got a nice clean image, and I have to say that Jarvis came out the best. You can almost see the, uh, maybe dither, you can almost see the reflections in the eye. And that's what I'm looking for uh, in that particular test. Moving on to um, some acrylic. Uh, this is a three millimeter acrylic, black acrylic. And I did a crosshatch on this because I wanted to see how, how the crosshatch would come out. And it did a very, very nice job on the crosshatch. And this is only a three inch piece here. So uh, keep in mind, these cutouts right here are super fine, super, super fine. And I'll show you the other side of this piece of acrylic. And I've got a twist tie on there so that you can see that the tongue is half, half the size of a twist tie. And over here, the bottom of the jaw is about the size of a twist tie. So very did a very nice job, very low power cut on this acrylic. All in all, the engraving and the cut on the acrylic was really perfect. So let's now take a look at the cutting ability of this machine. And I want you to see how beautifully clean these cuts came out here. The cut was just unbelievably clean. And I have to give the credit to the air assist, the 60 liter per minute um, air assist that comes with this machine. And just take a look here at the cut. Is that incredible? This is um, three millimeter, or this is four millimeter plywood, three ply plywood. And if you look here, this piece that I'm holding right here is cut out of this wood. There's the cutout right there on the right side. And it is clean as a whistle because of this air assist over here. It just did a fantastic job cutting that wood. And it did the same thing on the six millimeter wood as well. A nice clean cut with no charring. Now this particular project, when I put it together, was a four layer letter to Santa. And I wanted to have the black edges. So after I glued this up, I wound up taking a black marker and blackening the edges. <laughs> but most people are gonna say, hey, you know what? I don't want those charred er edges on my cutouts because it smells so bad. So you're probably better off getting a nice clean cut like this and then going back and blackening the edges with a marker so you don't have that smell of burnt wood that so many people complain about. Uh, it is easy to fix that. You can, in fact, just take a little cleaning vinegar and wipe down those burnt edges and the smell goes away, but most people don't know that. So let's just take a look real quick at the engraving, and these are similar speeds and this is compared to my the last 20 watt that I did and you can see that the A20 does not do as great a job on text as the last module that I uh, reviewed. The text is not as clean, it's not read as readable. Uh, this is apples to apples, similar settings and it just did not uh, compare to the last one. But I did notice that, you know, text was a problem. And I think that's because of the line size. And if we take a closer look at an image, you'll see that the image is also not as clear when you compare the 
the images as well and this is the same engraving running the same speed and power uh, both of these were ran at 8,000 millimeters per minute but I do want to say one thing that sort of puzzles me uh, even the creator Jason the creator of Lightburn will tell you that the preview will not match <laughs> the time in the preview will not match the actual cut but if we take a look here look at this right here stream completed in two minutes and 40 seconds and take a look at the preview two minutes and 40 seconds the preview was spot on uh, and I did notice that on all of the cuts and engravings that I did except for one they were all spot on within two or three seconds and that's something I haven't seen before with uh, any laser engraver using light burn is having that preview time estimate match what actually happens with the engraving that's very unusual all right so that's basically about it that's uh, all of the review video and now we'll talk a little bit about opinion what is my opinion on this well I think it's um, you know it's a tiled laser what can I say uh, the 20 watt module is great uh, it did some really great engravings and uh, it did photographs really well if we look at the um, let's see the 100 max power min 10 and we look at the any of the grayscale newsprint dither Jarvis any of these on the left side here uh, did a fantastic job on on photographs not quite as good as the last 20 watt laser engraver that I reviewed but um, still not bad all in all so this this is a pretty good picture right here photograph engraving and uh, I have to say you know this was at uh, 12,000 millimeters a minute and it did a, a, a pretty good job now the last one that I did again um, I was able to do a better job at 24,000 millimeters per minute but this machine is restricted to that 12,000 so what can I say now on this uh, Legends of the Blues if we take a look at the comparison between the last 20 watt and this 20 watt you'll see that there is much more detail uh, in the last 20 watt module and you may not notice it looking you know just at the pictures that I'm showing you of what this machine did but when we actually compare it to the last one you'll see that there is a big difference there and that difference can be important to some people um, as far as everything else the cutting ability uh, was on par with the last 20 watt that I did uh, I will be having a battle of the 20 watts coming in January so we will be comparing the Comgro 20 watt which you may not know uh, I've already gotten that one that's brand new to the market we'll co be comparing the Comgro we'll be comparing the Acer we'll be comparing the X tool and we'll be comparing the atom stack so we will have a battle of the 20 watts coming in January and that will be all of the same exact files all of the same exact settings uh, and you know speeds and power and and whatnot and uh, we'll do and a one-to-one -one comparison of all four of them and we'll see which one comes out on top and I am doing this with manufacturer suggested focal points so there will be no ramp tests or anything else dialing the machines in uh, it's going to be just like a typical user that gets one of these machines puts them together and starts using it so look for that video uh, coming in January and as well as uh, head over to the raffle site the link will be down below in the description and uh, this a20 pro is the raffle laser for December so remember you can enter every day if you like for a chance to win this particular machine 
So run over there and, and uh, enter in the raffle, and good luck to you. Good luck to everybody. Uh, now, I believe this one is going to also be a USA and EU raffle as well. So uh, I have no control over that. That is all up to the uh, shipping comp uh, the manufacturers. So I have no control over that. Uh, I'm sorry that the whole world can't participate, but uh, just the fact that they're offering the laser in the raffle, um, you know, for a vast majority of people that watch this channel is a great thing. So I hope you enjoyed the video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.